Hello and welcome to NI's ADAS NAD Stories. My name is Daniel Rielbauch. I'm a solutions marketer here at NI focused on ADAS and autonomous drive validation tests. Today, I'm all alone again, as you can see, um, but I will be joined by two gentlemen in just a bit um, who will be demonstrating a Camera Hill application to you, which uh, uses ANSYS AV Accelerate as the synthetic data source to our NIPXI based Hill system, including FPGA based fault injection. As we all should know and be aware of, it takes a massive amount of testing to get safety features out on the road. And therefore, simulation is a key technology. It actually allows us to speed up testing. That either means by testing earlier or simply testing faster because we can speed up the simulation or simply have multiple parallel instances, whether that's running on the cloud in a SIL fashion or running on multiple HIL systems, something that we would call a HIL farm. But speed is not the only thing that matters. It's also about coverage. And this is, again, due to the facts that I've mentioned before, where simulation can play a critical role to achieve higher coverage uh, in terms of testing, and therefore it's important. In collaboration with ANSYS, the leading engineering simulation provider, NI is bringing together best-in-class capabilities so you can innovate faster and rest assured that this happens without compromising on quality, which ultimately equals safety. So let's dive right into our system setup and get prepared for the demonstration. Okay, as you can see here, starting on the left-hand side of our diagram, we have ANSYS AV Accelerate running on a simulation PC, including a GPU. This allows us basically to utilize um, the ANSYS physics-based sensor models, which can then provide an output via HDMI out of the PC. In our case, this is going to be the data stream from uh, the camera model, and that is then fed into our PXI-based hill system. And uh, already on the input interface, we have an FPGA that allows us to do some decoding. After that, we are feeding the data over into our automotive camera interface, where we have another FPGA sitting that has IP running on it that allows us to do error injection directly into that data stream. Afterwards, that manipulated data stream is then serialized and put into a standard automotive camera protocol like GMSL or FPD link before it then gets fed into the actual ECU, which has the algorithm running on it that we actually have developed and that we want to test against that manipulated data stream. So in this case, uh, we have a system set up that allows us to do simulation and also do simulated based faults, as well as then also do error injection into the digital data stream along those lines to properly investigate and tease our algorithms running on the ECU. But enough of the talking, and here is it where I hand over to our two gentlemen, Nick and Kishore, so that they can show us the actual demonstration in action. Let's take a look uh, at, our, at our demo for, the, for the, this particular application. So what we have here is we have a high-performance computer here running uh, a GPU running the ANSYS simulation software. Out of the back of this, uh, we've got an HDMI port that's being connected to our PXI system to our HDMI input port. Uh, let's take a quick look at what's inside the PXI. So on the PXI system, we've got our embedded controller, which is running a real-time operating system uh, to handle all of the I.O. Uh, we've got our HDMI input, which it gets handled uh, into the FPGA board through an SFP Plus connector. Uh, that video signal gets connected along the PXI backplane, uh, which runs a high-speed timing and synchronization clock into our FPGA-enabled camera interface module uh, that either has interfaces for GMSL or FPD link. Um, in this case, what we're doing is we're doing a loopback. So that enables us to view both the data that gets uh, put into the RT system from the simulation software, as well as the manipulated data uh, where we've injected some errors and done some video processing uh, to, to replicate what would actually go into an ECU. Uh, and then the system can, can also be equipped with uh, peripheral interfaces for embedded networks like CANLIN and FlexRay, as well as uh, standard Ethernet interfaces uh, and automotive Ethernet interfaces. So this is what the hardware looks like. Let's take a look at the demo. So now what we have here <coughs> is uh, we've got a tile on the left that is uh, what's going on in the input of our HDMI interface. So this is what's coming out of the ANSYS simulation software. Uh, and on the right, uh, what we have is 
the output of our camera interface module. So we're um, getting the data from the simulation software, we're decoding that, that raw data, uh, and then we're putting that into our error injection module that can also talk to automotive cameras and ECUs. And we'll be able to visualize both uh, simultaneously. And then, then below that, we're able to do some, some image analysis, putting it into a histogram so we can compare um, what's on the input and what's on the output uh, of our hardware in the loop system. And then uh, we're able to create a, a, a test panel uh, which creates uh, includes a variety of different features. We've included a couple of examples of what we might want to, to do to inject errors and to create tests. So what you can see here is we're, we're dropping frames. So uh, here using the FPGA on the, on the camera card, we're getting the full frame rate of the video, uh, but we're able to test the ECU and see what the, how the ECU responds by dropping independent frames. Uh, and then we can, can we track you know, the number of frames that, that were input and the number of frames we outputted just to keep track and to be able to automate all of these tests. And all of these things come with APIs, so you'd be able to, to run this in an automated environment. We're showing you here interacting with the display um, and adding these faults, uh, but we can certainly do this uh, you know, in the cloud or, or on-prem on using an automated framework. Okay, so we've, we've dropped some frames, we've seen our EC response, we've tracked that, we've logged that, we know what's going on. Um, now we're going to start to manipulate the individual pixels on the image. So here, uh, we are, we're picking which pixels we want to be black. We can pick Im individual pixels if we want. We're here we're just doing uh, a large collection of pixels. And we're also able to change the color of those faulted pixels so that we can very easily track them. Again, th with the intention of seeing how the ECU responds. All right, so we've manipulated individual pixels. Now we're going to take a look at uh, manipulating the whole image. We're changing the brightness of, of that image, again, to see how the perception algorithm works in, in a whiteout condition or in, in a scenario where the, the lighting is poor. Um, if we can black it out or white it out, we can see how our perception algorithm responds. And then the last piece is uh, adding Gaussian noise. So here, again, at what point does our perception algorithm stop detecting objects? We're able to add Gaussian noise here uh, to see when the confidence drops where we're, we're, we no longer are able to, to track what's in the video. And these are just some examples of the types of things you can do in a real-time environment, incorporating image manipulation. Um, and then, while we're doing all of this, we're recording and tracking uh, the histograms, so the data of the, of the images, we're able to track how they're different. So we're very, e very easily able to replicate this in the future. We track all of the different parameters of those images, so that way we can run it in an automated environment. And now we blow up and zoom in on this image, and we can get a whole new series of characteristics. I'm going to have Kishore tell us a bit more about what's going on here. Perfect. Thanks, Nick. So what we're looking at here, as Nick mentioned, is the output from the ANSYS simulation. But if we take a step back, what's really happening is we're simulating the world and the light in the world. And all that light, which is a full spectral simulation, so we have all the wavelengths of the light, is being processed through the camera system. When that light goes through the optics and, and into the imager, it becomes a digital signal. So we've, we've gone through and, and uh, gone through the color filter array and, and created a digital signal. And really what we're seeing is that demosaic signal, so the decoded signal. So we can change that decoding structure from before looking at more of an RG, RGB decoding, here looking at more of a black and white decoding. So this is typical of uh, an RCCC color filter, one of the, the standard color filters that is used in the automotive industry, whereas the previous one is more of an RGGB color filter. So we can really look at um, the decoding of that digital signal and what that gives us. And here, um, now what we can also do is look at the raw signal. So the raw digital value, the voltage essentially that's being transmitted from the simulation before any post-processing takes place is also available, and that's what we're visualizing on the screen here. And this is most commonly used when we actually need that raw digital signal to be sent to the ECU. Many ECUs rely on raw data to perform their perception algorithm, and they don't want any post-processing to take place. So we have access to that raw data, and we don't need to decode it. We can simply pass that raw data into the ECU. Thanks, Kishore and Nick, for that great demonstration. As always, I would like to encourage you to leave comments and feedback down below, as we would like to hear from you what you think about this demonstration. You can also find me on LinkedIn or simply email me if you want to have a follow-up discussion around this topic. Looking forward to see you next time on our next episode of NI ADAS NAD Stories.